Hello everyone, how you doing? Well, this is still the Surreal Podcast and we've been reading the story Two Thoughts and a Lie. It's a horror story. <laughs> and we've been reading from chapter 1 and down to now we're going to read chapter 7. And trust me, this story has been intense. So if you're new to this channel, do well to subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when we drop a new story because this story is almost coming to an end and we have something new coming up for you guys. So it promises to be fun. Okay, so without further ado, let us dive into the story for today. <laughs> Chapter 7. Joe was now so furious with the sudden turn of events. He struggled to break free from the grip of the lake, but he couldn't. He did not even understand how it was that he was being held down by water. He turned to look at his brother Tim. Tim was panting. He was kicking and throwing his arms as hard as he could, also trying to free himself. This is insane, Joe screamed. You can't hold me prisoner here. Emily's in danger and I am her only hope. Do you expect me to sacrifice my sister just so I can stay alive? No, Marcos replied. I expect you to be wise. I know everything seems so strange and new to you, but this is not the time to be impulsive. You have never been an impulsive kid, so you can't afford to be impulsive now. There was something about Makosha's voice whenever she spoke. She sent waves of calmness. Her words could calm even the most turbulent storms. Jo had noticed it even when she spoke to Tiko minutes ago when he was raging. Her words also had a way of making the receiver feel that you could trust her and that you were safe as you could ever be. Joe was calm now. You never really explained to me how it is that I am your son, Makosh, Joe said. Makosh smiled so sweetly. You can let them now. You can let them go now, father. At her words, Tiko waved his trident once again. The lake was calm and the two boys were free. Years ago, Makosh started. After Debbie saved Tiko from the enchanted fishnet, she had witnessed what only a very few humans had ever seen. She was hence trusted by the deities and given the gift of the sight, meaning she could see and interact with terrestrial creatures at will. She was trusted most especially by me and I revealed myself to her severally in my human form, which is whom you first met. Unfortunately, whenever I make the transformation, it takes four hours before I can realize myself. So at first, I feel human. I feel like a 14-year-old Polish girl who can't understand any English. This is because I can change any human form. This is because I change my human form every hundred years. And I always pick the purest girls who die rather harsh deaths. And then I can fulfill their potential for them. It was making more sense now to both Joe and Tim as they listened on. It was also very unfortunate that the prophet manifested herself during my raid and that made me very unstable, hence what happened to Ryan. Well, to explain the most curious part of the story, when we learned that a beta, the prophet, had been born into earth as a normal human being, we knew that it was only a matter of time before she got her hands on the veil and destroyed all of which holds all, all of which we hold dear. So we had to match her powers, and hence all the deities in Nirvana conceived you, and we chose the bar to be your earthly mother and raise you until you become of age. But the problem was we never knew who the prophet was in a human form, so that meant we could not figure out when you had to be ready to take her on. This made us bestow supernatural strength in you, team. Just so the prophets were taken to action early, Joe would not have to face her alone. Both boys looked at each other. The whole thing was weird, but it did explain a lot. Just then, there was a very loud thunder and the waters began to rumble. The clouds gathered and what was a very bright and sunny afternoon now turned into a dark night in a matter of seconds. Both Tico and Makosh were frozen, as if they were both in a trance. The whole atmosphere and environment was beginning to change. Joe was looking around as he turned away from Makosh and Tico. He saw his mom. He saw Deborah Carson lying on the hospital bed. Mom! He screamed as he began to run towards her. He was running as fast as his legs could carry. But he wasn't moving and his mom remained so far from him. His heart sunk. 
even more into his stomach when he notices that notice the tall lanky figure standing over his mom and reaching for her neck. Get away from her! Joe screamed, so desperate to scare the prophet away. The prophet was leaning in on Debbie and was whispering something. Joe could see that Debbie was crying. If you won't tell me where it is, then I might as well get that information myself from your sir. At these words, the prophet began to perform the death on Debbie, and Joe could see the life leave Debbie from her open mouth and into the prophet's mouth. Joe was so angry. He was still trying to move, but it was not working. He felt something build up inside him. He felt the kind of energy he had not felt before, and he screamed again, Get away from her! This time, his words sent out a very powerful wave that pushed through everything and got to the prophet, sending her flying to the floor. She looked up and saw Joe. Joe could see her miserable eyes. But the worst thing now was that she was smiling. You're too late, Joseph, she said as she dashed towards Joe, trying to grab him by the throat again. But just as she was about to reach him, Makosh appeared and blasted half away. Makosh turned to Joe now and said ever so calmly, It's time to wake up now, Joe. Joe opened his eyes and he was at the lake again. He saw Tim, Tico and Makosh looking down at him. Tim had a very scared look in his eyes. Are you okay, Joe? Tim was hugging his baby brother. Joe now understood that he had been in another trance and this time witnessed what might have been his mother's mother. Mom needs her steam, Joe started. Then he looked at Makosh and asked, What did she mean when she said I was too late, Makosh? She has the veil now, Joe. She was able to get knowledge of where it was by draining Debbie's soul. And she has it now as we speak, Makosh said still calmly. There is no time, Joseph. The only chance we have now is to find out who she is in our human form and that would be the first step to stopping her. It's up to you now, Joseph. Me? Joseph asked surprisingly. What can I do? You need to go back to the first night she came to you. I knew it was a scary night, but you need to be brave. Close your eyes and think about that night. Try to concentrate and feel the way you felt that night. She will come to you again, and this time, you need to reach for her neck as she takes yours, and then take off her veil. There, you will see her real face. The whole thing felt scary, but Joe was ready to do anything to put an end to this tragic event. I'm ready, Joe said. I'll be there to pull you out just like I did a while ago, but you have to be really quick and make sure you don't die in the trance, otherwise it means she would have you in real life and we don't want that. He closed his eyes and tried to recall that night. Soon, he found himself in his room again with the prophet sinking her razor-sharp fingers into his neck. It felt just like that night, but this time, he was ready. He reached for her neck and got it, and with his other hand, he took off her cloak, and there it was. Those bright blue eyes staring into his own eyes. He couldn't believe who he was seeing. It was Angie, Eddie's older sister. Wow, just wow, guys. Wow, can this story get any more intense? Angie? Well, who would have thought? What do you guys think about it? Did you guys ever suspect it was Angie that was a prophet? What were the odds? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this story and do well to leave your comment and don't forget to like and share and, of course, subscribe. Okay, so we are rounding up. I'm very sure that the next chapter might be the last chapter or might not be the last chapter. What do you guys think? Do you want the story to continue? Let me hear it in the comment section. Have a nice day.